If you wanted to create the perfect Pokemon TCG troll deck, the recipe would look something like this. Two parts big HP, with six parts hand disruption, sprinkle in a little bit of, of ability lock, and then fold in that four part energy denial, put it in the oven for 45 minutes, and it looks like this. And yes, I know this is Arceus Gyarados, a deck that has not been relevant since Brilliant Stars was, in, was the brand new set. So. I thought that this deck was not relevant anymore too, until I decided that, hey, this deck might have some potential, and I built it and took it to a recent late night event and placed 19th place. And what I like about this deck is it just has a ton of HP, and there's so many different annoying options it can go with, and there's nothing really more fun in the Pokemon trading card game, in my opinion, than making it so your opponent can't really do anything. So it all starts with, with Arceus that, that sets the table with its Trinity Nova attack and Starworth, its amazing consistency. So then we, we Trinity Nova to excite water energies to our Gyarados, which has two very cool attacks, Hyper Beam that does 120 and then discard an energy for opponent's active Pokemon, and then Max Tyrant, which is 240, just vanilla for water, water, colorless. So what I, one of my favorite combos with this deck is to use Max Tyrant to hit a V-Star Pokemon like Lugia or Giratina for 240, and we have a Panic Mask on that... Um, uh, on that Gyarados, then the, their V-Star Pokemon just cannot attack, so a uh, very cool combo there, and um, the, the reason why Hyper Beam is just so broken right now is that Arceus Mirror matches are playing very thin lines of each of their basic energies, like the, the Arceus Dural and Umbreon deck may, may be playing like four metals, four darks, and like two or three fightings, so, and, and if they're spreading their energies across multiple attackers, uh, we can really punish them by using Hyper Beam and Crushing Hammer to make it so they really can't do anything. So I feel like this deck actually has a very underrated matchup spread, so that's really what I want to go over in today's video is why this deck is very underrated in my opinion, and I, I don't think my list is nearly perfect yet. Um, I have, um, this is another little iteration that I've gone with uh, trying to use the Halucha now, because I ended up playing this one at the Late Night Invitational. Um, did not go well, but um, I just I, uh, generally drew very poorly throughout that tournament, so... Um, I feel like the deck is still a bit rough around the edges, but I think the matchup spread is pretty amazing. Like, um, uh, in, into the, that Garbo matchup, uh, we have the ability lock, uh, thanks to Path to the Peak. We have a very big HP, and then this is where Panic Mask really shines because we can put Panic Mask on that uh, Gyarados or the or, or Arceus, and if they want to damage our Pokemon up with Psychic Embrace to one-shot us, that's okay because then they can't damage us. So. Um, and in, in that original list, you, you did see I was playing uh, the Radiant Greninja and Energy Switch combo, which is a bit meme-y, um, but you can go, um, if you have an Energy pre-dropped on the Radiant Greninja or a Raihan, uh, you can uh, pop up that, that Radiant Greninja all in one go, potentially Moonlight Shuriken and snipe a couple Curlius to swing the game. I also ultimately opted not to play this for the uh, big Invitational tournament because um, I figured it was too gimmicky for best of three. It'd be easy to play around those other two games if it did actually work. I think this deck has a decent time into Lost Zone Box because we simply have a lot of HP and a large, um, just a, a large repertoire of hand disruption, which Lost Box, of course, loves to build up their hand a lot. I'm still sort of out. Um, I'm, I'm unsure if you actually want to bench Gyarados in, in that matchup because I feel like if you play it correctly and just have one RCS, one Gyarados, and one or um, two RCS and one Gyarados in play, uh, things are actually not too bad for you because especially if you have a V-Guard on that Gyarados, a Raikou can't actually one-shot the Gyarados uh, V-Max and it, it can use that Max Tyrant to one-shot a Dragonite. So I think actually benching it is correct. I did drop a game to this in the Invitational because I just totally bricked out. It was uh, very disappointing, but um, I think you're just generally pretty okay into Lost Box. You sort of are banking on your hand disruption doing something, which um, obviously isn't the most reassuring thing, but um, also Crushing Hammer can be pretty cool because you can force them to use uh, multiple Mirage Gates just to attack with the same attacker multiple times. So I wouldn't actually call it a terribly like amazing matchup for you, but I think with hand disruption, it should definitely be playable. Uh, Chin Pao is a pretty scary matchup for this deck. Um, I think our pretty much biggest chip in that matchup is to go like Judge Path Prey in the early turns, and um, Panic Mask does have a bit of utility because we can throw that Panic Mask on an Arceus. If we hit a Chin Pao for 180 damage, then that Chin Pao is just um, it's just done for the game. It can't really do anything into that Arceus. And of course, the, the Chin Pao pl player loves to put their Chin Pao in the actual spot early and start using that Shivery Chill to fill their hand full of energies. So, um, also, if um, Chin Pao builds are pivoting more to the Arceus build, not playing the B Barrel, uh, I think that, that definitely bodes better for this deck where um, hand disruption is one of our strongest um, options so they won't be quite as um, quite as good in the late game to keep refilling their hand and as I mentioned a bit earlier I, I feel like this deck's biggest appeal is it, it's just the, the most favorite Arceus deck into the mirror match 
Uh, with Crushing Hammer, it pretty much can neutralize if, even if they go first and get that energy drop because most of the time in those RCS mirrors, pretty much whoever goes first usually wins because they get the first energy drop, they get the first evolve, they get the first knockout, and it's usually pretty hard for the other player to win. But Crushing Hammers and Hyper Beam really turn the tide because uh, it's just the, um, usually they only are playing Raihan for energy recovery, no, no Super Rod or anything like that. So if they want to load up, uh, multiple attackers they spread their resources very thin and uh, we we can capitalize on that with the hyper beam and crushing hammers i actually think it's probably not correct for them to bench uh the duraludon in the arc dural umbreon matchup just because um it's uh, there's two different unique energies that, that they have to uh, be careful of and between fighting and metal but with crushing hammer and hyper beam we put a lot of pressure on, on, on their energies so they're really um it's, it's really hard for them to get multiple uh, pulverizations off with one single duraludon uh mew and lugia are a bit more sketchy matchups in my original list you saw i was playing the spirit tomb but mew is only about five percent of the meta right now so i figured i'd rather uh, cut it for a more consistent card i opted to go with the radiant alakazam and halucha because i wanted to have a better time into loss and giratina and also it'd be a bit uh i mean it'd be even better in, in mirror match not that we really need it so mew is definitely a very uh sus matchup i i, I do think Energy Denial uh, can make it so pulling off a huge Metal Weta knockout is unreasonable. We still have a lot of HP. We have Path and Hand Disruption. So I don't think it's super uh, terrible. If, if the Mew player does win the Coin Flip or can get turned to Metal Weta Pressure, uh, things can definitely be tough. So uh, Spirit Tomb is probably be in and out of the list. Um, we're still working on things. But a Lugia generally feels like pretty much a Coin Flip because the Lugia player uh, goes first. Things, uh, it's, it's, it's very... It, 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 can, it can be very hard to keep up with them, especially if they pop off, get both Archeops down, get the turn two summoning stars, are able to get through Path to the Peak. A Spirit Tomb uh, can be useful to uh, slow them down, maybe make it so, so they can't use Luminous Sign. I've actually had had some success running them low in energies uh, because we can we can Panic Mask to pin a Pokemon with energies on them that can't attack. We have Hyper Beam and uh, Crushing Hammer. And, and Single Strike Tyranitar is one of their strongest attackers in that matchup. He could one shot RCS, put big damage pressure on Gyarados. But if he's not single strike crush attack, they're milling their own cards and sometimes milling their own energies, their own urns. So I actually did win a, a, a game yesterday just by running my opponent out of energies, which was pretty hilarious. But um, I don't think Lugia is a good matchup. I don't really think it's a bad matchup. It's sort of just if we can go first, if we can drop a path, if we can disrupt their hand, um, just make life very difficult for the Lugia player, I think we will prevail. But uh, sometimes Lugia just draws everything and there's not much you can do about it. And I think finally the matchup, the last matchup I, I, I want to touch on, I guess I, I, I will briefly touch on Giratina. You play it pretty similarly to Lost Zone Box, uh, just spam hand disruption early. Um, energy Denial can be quite nice because they're generally playing less energy recovery than just your classic Lost Zone builds. So Crushing Hammer and Hyper Beam can be very uh, an annoying for them. And if you're struggling with Giratina, I think the Alakazam Halucha uh, combo definitely could be beneficial. Um, I think the matchup is probably one of, if, if you're playing the original list, it's probably one of your worst matchups. You sort of um, like to put in the Spirit Tomb for the favorable Mew, but then you sort of sack the Giratina matchup and it's sort of just hand, hand disruption and Prey, which is always uh, an option RC decks have had. And it, it does work uh, pretty well in, in best of one sometimes, but in best of three, it's not a very dependable strategy. So then finally, Urshifu, and this matchup is very intricate. Uh, you, you uh, If you can, getting a V Guard on RCS is pretty clutch because. Then they're only, only hitting for 270 with Gale Thrust. And then if we could pick it up with a Charon, then we can deny some prizes that way. But I think it, the correct play is actually to attack with the Gyarados V and not evolve it. Because Get Angry is just such a threat for them. Uh, they're not going to be one-shotting that, that Gyarados. And they have uh, no way to, to, to do so. But if you can get a Choice Belt on a Gyarados V, Heavy Storm still doing respectable damage. And if they use one Gale Thrust and hit you for 150, you can just instantly respond back with a one-hit knockout with Get Angry. And if your opponent tries to, to, to play around it, just using their double gunners and their Radiant Alkazam just to ping up your um, Gyarados before uh, closing it out with a Rapid Flow or a Gale Thrust, uh, then you can evolve it, go for Hyper Beam. Uh, hand Disruption is pretty good, especially if you can knock out their Octillery in the early game. Hand Disruption is uh, quite valuable. Um, it can definitely slow them down quite a bit. Um, I did lose this matchup um, in the Invitational. It was a very close game. Uh, it just pretty much just came down to whether my opponent hit their outs off an Iono, in which they did. Uh, but it's just such a it's such a skill intensive matchup, so I do quite in enjoy it. But um, I I feel like out of all the matchups I touched in this video, they're definitely all 
winnable. Um, some of them are more favorable than others. Some of them are just more like uh, uh, plan A is uh, go first and play your game. Then plan B is just judge path prey. But that's been generally one of RCS's um, main win conditions and been one of the reasons why RCS has been so successful for so long. But what do you think of my RCS Gyarados deck? Is it a deck that you personally want to try or do you think it has, has legs in this current standard format? Well, I know Gyarados doesn't have legs, but does this deck have potential in the current standard format? Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. I mean, I'm, I'm very happy to see this deck succeed because it was one of my favorites uh, back in the Brilliant Stars meta. I'm going to keep working on it because I think it still has a, a little work to be done. Um, if, if, if there are any changes you have in mind, uh, um, of course, let me know. And um, if, if you got this kind of content, uh, please like this video, subscribe to my, to, to my channel. I really uh, appreciate it. It goes a long way for the algorithm. So uh, thank you guys for watching through all the way to the end. Uh, me ramble about one of my favorite decks. But um, I love you guys. Um, I appreciate all your support. And I'll catch you in the next one.